Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrard Show. I'm your host, Sherrard. I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday afternoon or evening, wherever the zone you are in. I'm Sherrard. We have a fabulous show this evening. Today, we're going to be talking about my story. You see the glory? You see all the glory, but hear my real story. The Sherrard Show is brought to you by iHeartRadio. You can see the Sherrard Show on iHeartRadio, as well as on Comcast NBC. And I'm excited because yesterday we had a wonderful show. We had uh, Stephanie Spruill, who has worked with Michael Jackson. Um, she has worked with Tina Turner and some of the biggest names out there. She was on the show. As well as we had um, Mrs. Avis uh, Harrell. She was also on the show as well. She had toured with um, and worked as well with um, Michael Jackson, but also she worked with Ray Charles and uh, Wayne Newton and many other people. We had a wonderful story with them. And then we had a gentleman who had a, a soulful, soulful voice that could really get down. And he has big things coming for him. Uh, Mr. Kobe Cordell was on the show as well. And now we're continuing on with two um, very special individuals on the show. This first gentleman, um, he lost a hundred pounds. If you look at the look at your monitor, this man has went from the before and now look at him now. He is fit as a fiddle, but also he's been making great use of his time being in quarantine. He's also published two books, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to talk more about it. And he's all about being positive and being upbeat. And you will hear it in his voice, Mr. Jonathan Harris. Welcome to the Sherrard Show. How are you, sir? I'm doing just well. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm so excited. I know this is going to be a great episode today. We really, really appreciate grateful to be here. That. And then we have a gentleman uh, who really needs no introduction. His, uh, he's a uh, part of a first of all, of the Motown family. He is a singer, a songwriter. He has been performing for many years, even though he's still very young. Um, and if you don't know his sound and music, you will hear it momentarily, but he's part of the Holland and Dozer uh, songwriting team of Motown. He's related. That is his dad. His dad is, was an engineer. His uncle is a writer and he is a performer. And he's been performing since the age of 15 from Detroit, uh, Michigan. And he has stopped by the Sherrard Show. He's worked with many people. We're going to talk about that as well. Mr. Lamont Dozier, welcome to the Sherrard Show. How are you, sir? Hey there, Lamont Dozier Jr. I'm glad to be here with you this evening. Uh, Sherrard is great. And uh, looking forward to being on the show and, uh, you know, talking to your audience, man. It's, it's a pleasure. And we appreciate that um, because you've been very busy. I've heard your music and I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Oh, but we're going to start first off with you, Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan, tell us a little bit about, first of all, how were you able to lose 100 pounds and go from this that we see on our monitor to what we're seeing right now? So it all starts with being tired. And I don't mean tired in the sense of wanting to go to sleep. I mean tired in the sense of being in a place in your life when you just said enough is enough. Um, I remember July 4th, 2019, just getting to a place where I said, I don't want to do this anymore. I remember talking with my dad on the phone and I was actually crying like heavily, just being so tired of, you know, my parents and how I felt and everything just came with having all of that weight. And I knew at that point, I said, when I wake up tomorrow, things will be different. So I remember changing how I ate, how I thought about food, how I spent my time and I made my health a priority. You know, growing up, I was always someone who cared to make sure that those around me were taken care of however I could help. But sometimes that also made me put myself last. And I had to do a completely mental overhaul on how I viewed my day, how I viewed everything and start making my health a top priority. So from walking more to not eating so late to you know being mindful of portion control and all things encompassing, um, I was able to reach my goal ahead of schedule. Uh, my original goal was to lose 100 pounds from July 4th, 2019 to July 4th, 2020. I was gonna give myself a year to do it. I actually did it in 295 days. So I met the goal on April 23rd, 2020, which was uh, kind of close to the start of the pandemic. The cool part about it is after I met the goal, I actually have been able to lose even more weight. So now as of today, it's over 115 pounds because I've been able to maintain it. And now uh, working into the strength uh, training slash weight building component of this entire journey. Now you look like a pretty tall young man. How tall are you? I'm about six, five. Oh, okay. Wow. So you're very tall. Now, um, was it a crash diet or <laughs> yes. was it, it was a crash diet? So essentially, no. Um, I'm a huge fan of oatmeal. Oatmeal uh, was a, a big help for me because it kind of fills you up throughout the day. So, you know, there were times where I might eat oatmeal maybe around sometimes 10, maybe 11. I wouldn't want anything until maybe dinner. So there's a process called intermittent fasting where what you do is 
you essentially eat your meals during a cluster of time and you just do water the rest of the time. I also wanted to do a water challenge. So what I did is I gave up soda, juice, alcohol, and at every single meal, I always drink water. I'm actually still doing the water challenge as we speak, but I remember being at the mall with my friend and I had this Tropicana orange juice and I remember drinking and I said to her, I said, this is gonna be my last thing of juice for a minute. Um, so doing that, but believe it or not, I still eat a lot of the same things that I want. It's just maybe, for example, if I go out to a restaurant, I'm not doing that three or four times a week, like I would in my past. It's like maybe just once or twice. And if I am going to do those things, I'm being more mindful to make sure if I'm going to have a heavy dinner, I don't also need a heavy breakfast and a heavy lunch. So just better planning. Um, but That's one thing that I wanted this to be is I wanted it to be a realistic commitment. I didn't want it to be something where, okay, because I'm doing this, I can never have my favorite foods again, because then it becomes miserable. And I feel like in life, when you make something a chore, you're less likely to accomplish this because I said, this isn't a task. This is a lifestyle change. It just has to be a part of the new you. So you have to come to terms with, you know, still eating the things you want, but also incorporating in things that you need to do to live a healthier life. Well, and speaking of commitment, um, let, let's kick it over to Mr. Doja. Um, now, Lamont Doja Jr., um, fascinating individual, first of all. Um, you're, you've yeah. been committed to the music industry for many years, um, performing with some of the greatest, um, and even being around um, some of the greatest in Motown. Now, did you feel, Lamont, being pressured, did you feel pressured to um, be a success, being that you come from a musical family? Um, I wouldn't say pressure, but there was a certain standard that you had to maintain because of, you know, the stock that you come from has had great success in this industry. So you wanted to, um, you know, be the best that you can be. And that meant practicing, that meant putting in all the time that you possibly could at what your craft was. And for me, it was always singing and songwriting. I started out in the church when I was younger and, um, because of my mom, Elizabeth Ann Doja, she was a, a choir director at the time and a classical pianist teacher. And she put me on my first instrument and got me going. And then I started singing solos in the church when I was 11 years old. So it gave me a foundation out of the church to uh, start pursuing my musical dreams. But when you, when you talk about um, pressure, I just, um, I don't, I don't seek to duplicate the success of my, my father or those who've come before me, but I, you know, it is a plan of mine to be excellent in the time, you know, where I am today. I mean, there's like two different industries from when he came along and what, what we're doing today. And so I think you have to look at uh, where you're at today, how the industry is, is run and, and find your place in it today. Uh, but uh, you must maintain a standard that that was common back then. You had great artists then and you have great artists now. I just don't think we have the mainstream um, uh, spotlight like uh, like we could. But uh, there's some very talented people out there. And uh, I just want to be mentioned in the talent uh, pool, so to speak, and uh, just bringing just keep bringing great music to people and let them know that the uh, R&B and soul is definitely still alive and with us. Go ahead, go ahead and preach. Go ahead and preach. Now, you're saying something very interesting <laughs> um, in terms of um, the music industry, what you were saying about how um, it, it's me. And we we're talking about this yesterday and I was talking about it to the Isley Brothers um, the week before last. Um, music has changed, and I don't expect it to, to stay the same, but the thing that's very interesting about it, and I'll let you chime in on this as well, uh, Jonathan, is why is it, it seems like, the music from the 60s and the 70s have more staying power than the music of today? Why is that? Well, I, I think I, we have to look at uh, uh, how the music has changed, how people acquire their music. We also have to look at how the music was made back then. Back then, musicians were all in the same room. And that meant people played instruments and, and when something was produced, it was written, the vocal arrangements were put out, uh, people had charts in front of them and you had um, cats playing their own uh, instruments. Whereas today you have guys, if you have a computer, man, you can make a record, you know, <laughs> uh, depending on the loops and, and the, the pre-produced uh, tracks and what have you, you can do that. So that is uh, very different um, how music is uh, made today. And then when you, when you come from that, uh, what they call old school aspect of making music. You know, the standard was much higher. So if you were a singer, you had to sing. If you were a musician, you were going up against other great musicians. So, uh, and if you notice too, we had more black bands back then and we had all all these mu uh, musical things like Earth, Wind & Fire, Ohio Players, you know, Daz Band, Lakeside. It was, it was a competition of who, when you hit that stage, who was gonna hit it with the most power. But it's a little bit different now because, you know, um, artists are not, I would say they're a jack of, all traits and a master of none. You know, they sell gym shoes and they rap and they do this, <laughs> they do that. And I'm not knocking that because you're a product of your time. But back then when Aretha and all of them would come along, they were a product of their time. And uh, 
music artists were music artists. They didn't they didn't sell cologne and perfume and all of that. Yeah, that's funny you say that. that. But it's different. But it's just different. That's funny, Lamar. Because the most thing, the most you would see them in is maybe in a Coca Cola commercial. You know, exactly. That was, that was about mm -hmm. all back then. Now, what do you think about that, Jonathan? Being a young man, um, you probably you know it's a totally different era. You look like you barely even thirty at that. But um, what do you <laughs> feel? How do you feel about the music of today compared to what you your parents used to listen to? Right. So fun fact for you, I actually just turned 30 uh, in July. So ah. I just, just hit the, the threshold. I, <laughs> just, I just just hit the 30 threshold. But um, I think the biggest difference between then and today is that society didn't have as great of a demand back in the day for you to always be producing something. I think that today there was so much pressure on an artist to have a song every week and an album every six months. And, you know, when you're making good music or good anything, it takes time. It takes good producers. Um, you know, as he was saying, instrumentation and just all of those things that may be two to three years in between uh, albums or projects. But today, I think that everything is becoming so like back to back to back single because the audience is saying, OK, you just put out an EP. Tell us when your next one is in the first, you know, and this one just dropped yesterday. So sometimes I feel like it's a little rushed um, to meet this uh, unrealistic demand from society. So I think that that is kind of hurting us. I think a lot more is sampled today as well as um, compared to things back in the day. Yeah. Very interesting. Now, um, that was one thing I was mentioning to the Isley Brothers. Do you not know that Who's That Lady was sampled more than 800 times by artists of today? Yeah. Just Who's That Lady yeah. alone. Um, that's a fascinating. And a lot of people, um, a lot of these artists of today borrow that music, don't even know who sing it. They just like the sound, don't even know who sing it mm -hmm. or the story behind it. But let me throw this out to you, Lamont. Um, I see that you also are a band leader. So by saying that you're a band leader means that you sing or perform with a live band. Is that correct? That is correct. And I've also been uh, uh, anointed with the task of bringing a band together for different artists. I did that for Jennifer Hudson. Uh, we were doing a private engagement together. And um, Eli Bro, one of the billionaires of uh, Los Angeles, he had a birthday party at the Sony lot. And they said, Lamont, you know, we're having Jennifer uh, come in and and we need her to uh, have a band situation. And can you handle that for us? I said, most likely. And I put together a nice 11 piece band for her and she came in and uh, she didn't want to do a lot. She, you know, she just wanted to come in and sing her songs and then do the show, you know? So she wasn't gonna give us a whole lot and it was beautiful. She came in, she liked the guys. I think she tried to steal a couple of my bandmates, but she was, uh, she came in and did a great job and the show went off with a hitch. And uh, we were on there with Jay Leno and some other people. So depending on the task, uh, I usually perform by myself with my bandmates. And some of these guys are featured on the uh, songs I gave you as well. Uh, they're just A plus uh, first call musicians in the industry when it comes to session work. And um, so it gives you, it gives me the, one of my things I love to do is perform live. So it gives me that outlet and uh, I treasure it and I, I really look forward to it. Yeah, man. Now, uh, for those who just joined us, we are speaking to uh, Lamont Dozer uh, Jr., who is a singer, a songwriter, as well as a, a performer. It also has a new single out, as well as an album. We'll be talking about that momentarily. And then we also have Mr. Jonathan Harris, who is a motivational speaker and author. And this man has lost 100 pounds in less than 219 days. Yeah. You are watching us on Comcast NBC, as well as on uh, iHeartRadio, for those who are driving and listening. Now, I'm going to throw this to you, Jonathan. Tell us a little bit about uh, your first book that you have written, um, One Out of Two in One Day. So um, believe it or not, I'm actually a three-time published author. The cool part about COVID is that the second and third book were the ones that dropped on the same day. So um, just to give you a little bit of context, um, I wrote my first book back in 2016 called, I actually have it here, uh, Master of Ceremonies, A Male's Guide for a Successful Life. And that's actually the uh, blown up poster you see in the background. But um, what happened is I had this thought that I wanted to do a second book and I actually started it in 2016, uh, soon after my grandfather passed. I've had so many technical issues trying to get this thing uploaded. I almost thought this was a sign that I wasn't even supposed to release other books because everything that could have gone wrong literally went wrong and um, had to continue to push through. What ended up happening is in the midst of me making my first book, which was a uh, teen's self-help book, I had so many moms, single moms who loved it, but they said, I wish that you would make something for toddlers because my first book again is for young adult males. 
So they said, can you make something for the little kids? I said, sure. So as I'm working on it, uh, now I'm having mom say, okay, you have two books for boys. You don't have anything for girls. Can you please make something for the girls? So I essentially made the third book out of a kind of spinoff from the concepts in the second book, which is called Growing Gents. So Growing Gents and Girls with Pearls, which are right here, uh, talk to little kids, babies, toddlers about things that we would want them to do. So whether that's being helpful around the house, whether that's being early, whether that's using their words instead of their fists, um, teaching them how to be respectful and kind children. And I thought how perfect the timing that these books were released during COVID because uh, teachers had shifted to remote learning and the parents became the primary teachers again, where the students and the kids are at home. And I felt like with, you know, all of the issues going on with the book, ironically enough, I stopped having issues and the everything worked out where when I released it, it came out July 19th, 2020, right in the smack dab of COVID. So I felt like this was the perfect gift for parents to work with their children. And believe it or not, during COVID with everybody being at home, a lot of people are now expecting children. So I think that this is just a perfect kind of segue and dovetail into a resource for brand new parents. Now, um, Jonathan, where can they purchase these books? They can purchase them not only through Amazon, but through my personal website, which is www.authorjohn.com. Uh, again, that's A-U-T-H-O-R-J-O-N. Positive, very, very positive. We really appreciate that. Now, um, Lamont, speaking of um, new products on the market, let's talk about your new album as well as your new single. Well, I tell you, uh, it's, it's, it's from the compilation that we haven't dropped yet. It's called Introducing Lamont Dozier Jr. And uh, it it's, consists of four songs. It's basically an EP. And the first two songs I released, I believe it was on July 24th, and it was two. We did a remake of uh, one of my dad's tunes when he was on Invictus record label called Why Can't We Be Lovers? And he co-wrote that with Brian Holland. And uh, he sang the lead vocalist on the original, uh, lead vocals on the original uh, tune in, in 1972. And it's been one of my favorites. And so I said, you know, I started doing it with my band in LA and we would be working at the Beverly Hills Hotel and different jazz clubs around town, vibratos, what have you. And I added it to the set and we were getting such a great reception because people were constantly putting the onus on me saying, man, when are you gonna cover something of your dad's and, and you need to sing this one and they had their favorites. And I said, well, I'm going to start with my favorite, one of my favorites and that was Why Can't We Be Lovers? So we went in and uh, we cut this in 2018 and uh, it, it made the cut and I'm very pleased that it is, it's not a direct um, copy of the original, but it is, I, I'd say it's updated for 2020, 2021. And then the second song we also released, uh, we did uh, something called, uh, I'm Gonna Take My Time. And, and that's an original one that I wrote. And I'm very pleased with that one. We've been having great success with that over in uh, UK, uh, in, in Europe. Uh, we, we've charted like three weeks in a row at the UK Urban Influences chart and number one on the Breaking Artist Independent. So, cause I'm an independent artist and uh, we've been doing very well with it and we're starting US promotion with it here. So. Um, uh, that's just a little background on the first uh, two releases, and there's other uh, songs on there as well that we did. Now, where can we where can we hear your your um out the two songs you were just mentioned? Where can we um fans listen? Well, actually, you can get the songs on all the streaming platforms. Uh, I'm on Pandora, I'm on Spotify, but you can also uh, uh download them at um Apple Music, iTunes, Amazon Music, uh, Google Play, Title. Uh, you can get them there as well. All right, now, um, before we take our first commercial break, I, I, I'm gonna present a question that I want you all, but for both of you, I want you all to answer this. Think about this in our commercial break, and then uh, when we come back, I want you to um, answer it for me. Now, um, for you, uh, for you, Jonathan, being overweight for a long time, and then all of a sudden um, being thin, what were some of the challenges or some of the ridicule you were dealing with um, from people? And now that you're thin, how are you, um, how are you dealing with your new self? Now, just we're going to answer that in our next in our, after our commercial break. And then for you, Lamont, I want you to ponder on this question: the fact that you come from a musical background, people oftentimes think you have it easy. But tell us why it hasn't been easy, in spite of coming from a musical background. I'm sure our, when we come back, we're going to hear their answers right after this. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sherrard Show. I'm your host, Sherrard, having a wonderful conversation on this Sunday afternoon with Mr. Jonathan Harris, as well as Lamont Dozier Jr., um, who is just all about music and songwriting and doing big things. I just presented a question to those two individuals that they're going to answer. I'm going to start with you, Jonathan. Um, let's get the first part of that question. Okay. So again, with the question being, you know, how did I deal with the transition, ridicule and things of that nature? Um, what really helped me is just remembering why I started. I didn't go into this health journey for 
um, public acceptance or anything like that. I went into it because I wanted to live a better life. So when ridicule started to come, um, believe it or not, as crazy as this might sound, I've received more ridicule on being skinnier than I have been for being overweight. Uh, overweight. So I've been, you know, big much of my life since I was probably 10 or 11. And again, just turning 30. So I've, I've heard all the jokes and the different things like when I was bigger, but maybe I've just become used to them, but I was not used to the other side of this. So um, when I had first lost the hundred pounds, uh, everyone was like extremely proud of me and things like that. But then as I started to lose, like maybe the following 10, I started hearing things like you look sick. Um, I've heard, uh, you know, you're withering away. I've heard all types of comments from different people. Some I've known my whole life, some I've just met. And I'll be honest, at times it definitely did hurt because I just wasn't used to that. I was like, wow, I thought people would just be really proud. But I think what it was is maybe they had a certain expectation for me as to how I was going to look. And what I had to remember is it's not about what they think, it's about what you feel about yourself. So that was something that really just kind of helped keep me focused. If not, those comments would have definitely have torn me down. Uh, something that I always try to remember too is that I have big dreams. So because I have big dreams, I have to be used to big ridicule. You know, growing up, you know, in a two parent household from the suburbs, um, there are times where I can admit I've been very protected from just different things that maybe other people had to go through. But, you know, I have aspirations to one day run for local politics. Um, you know, with my books potentially even becoming, not even potentially, but definitely one day becoming a internationally traveling best-selling author, that's going to come with ridicule on social media from people I grew up with, with people that I'm just meeting. And I'm realizing that everything that I'm going through now is really just preparing me for that next step. So when I do hear those comments, I say, well, Jonathan, if you ever become a millionaire, you're going to hear this 10 times the amount of what you're hearing it now. So you better get used to it. And that's really uh, how I've been kind of taking the comments. It's kind of like, this is my training zone for my next level. Yeah, so you're, you're going through the abuse now so that you can be able to handle it later when it comes more. Huh? And you're doing a great oh, job. Yeah, because I, I see it's, I appreciate it. I was going to say, you know, being uh, young and being on social media, I watch celebrities get torn to shreds every single day. And sometimes I look at that stuff and I'm just like, oh my goodness, I couldn't imagine being on the other side of that. But the truth is one day I will be on the other side of that. And, you know, they're always taught too, like, you know, don't look at that stuff um, because at the end of the day, it'll really start to get to you. Um, instead, just continue to pray for those people and, you know, stay in your grind, keep doing what you're doing. So I, I very much try to take that same advice for myself. Very good. Very good. And what about you, Lamont? Because uh, I'm sure a lot of people tell you, oh, you had it easy. You know, I'm working for a record deal and you just automatically, you were born with a record deal. Uh, 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 you know, things like that. Uh, you just, you know, you just transition into um, um, from, from just a uh, lateral movement because your parents are, are, are successful, your dad and all that, which may not be true. But what's the story behind that, Lamont? Well, no, it's not true at all. My path has been totally different than my, my dad's uh, foray into the music business. I think we come from different times, different um, uh, circumstances. And uh, one, one of the big things I can cite for sure is a uh, changing in the industry and what was hot and, and, and what was not. I can't tell you how many times I sent packages to a and &R. Yes, and that's right. Being the son of Lamont Dozier, who's considered a legend in the industry, I sent packages to a and &R departments, uh, record labels, and heard the ubiquitous no, 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 no. That's not what we're looking for. I don't swear on my records. I'm not rapping. I'm doing that good old R&B soul music. And as the industry shifted to hip hop and rap and things when I was coming along, um, the, the deals were not there for me. And uh, my path was totally different. So coming from an industry that has many facets, you know, I started developing myself as a live performer and working with some of the, the great musicians that I've had the opportunity to work with. And in doing so, I developed uh, my craft as a live uh, performer and as a songwriter and as a singer. And that kind of got me uh, on, on the path of just wanting to be the best that I could be. And it wasn't about calling my dad up and saying, hey man, you know, hook me up with a deal with a phone, you know, with the phone call and call up your friends and make it happen. That never happened. I never called him and asked him to do that for me. But I found a great joy in uh, going through things on my own steam and developing those relationships on my own, which you have to do in this business. So when you call the people pick up the phone and they know who they're talking to and want to talk to you and you appreciate it for your own talent. So my path is totally different, um, you know, and it took me a while uh, to get to even my first recording. I've recorded music with other artists and I've sang on their records. But as for me being a solo artist, this is my first time out. And a lot of people find that strange. Well, what took you so long? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Well, that wasn't my path. And I'm glad I took the path that I did because 
I can certainly stand on my own. And, and what Jonathan was saying, people are going to have something to say one way or another. But what you have to do is you have to know yourself. And in the music industry, you you definitely have to know yourself because you're going to go through some yeses and no's. It's going to be dips and valleys. Uh, but you got to understand that you're doing it because you love doing it. And it's uh, you're finding your audience and they're going to find you. And and that's that's what you want to uh, cling to and work toward, man. So very, very good. There. Now, we have only about 30 seconds left. Uh, so really quickly, um, Jonathan, give me give some advice to some um, young people that are watching the show right now and they're inspired by you and they want to take embark on the path that you're going on. What kind of is, is, inspirational words you can give to them in 30 seconds left? Sure, I got two quotes that I live by. The first is comparison is a thief of joy. That's by Teddy Roosevelt, meaning that you have to love who you are and the path that you're on. Don't worry about what other people are doing because your path is unique to you. The second quote that I try to live by is the same day that you plant the seed is not the same day that you eat the fruit, meaning that you have to be patient and know that if you continue to grow it, it is eventually going to be something beautiful for you. Very good, very good. You're, you're wise beyond your years, young man. You're wise beyond your years. Really appreciate that. And what about you, Lamont? What kind of um, advice would you give for someone who say, I can do what you got, he can do, or even more than that, they just want to get out in this music industry um, as is. What kind of advice would you give them? Well, I, I would suggest and I would advise them to learn everything about it as they possibly could. And I do live by the adage, if, if you fail the plan, you plan to fail. You, you really want to get into what your, what, you, what your heart and your passion leads you to. Learn everything about it. Please understand that there's many facets to this industry, and it'll keep you going depending on how talented you are or how versatile uh, what you bring to the table. Uh, if you can't be out front, you can be a great musician, you can be a great songwriter, producer, you can be a, a great business person that brings talent to, 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 the, uh, to the notice of people in the audience. Um, just learn everything about what you really want to do and be steadfast and just put the work in and everything else will be added unto you. So just keep the faith, man, and um, just be true to who you are and keep pushing on, but always have a plan and implement the plan. And Very good. Really Lamont, um, for your fans, where could they be able to keep in contact with you uh, via social media? Uh, I'm on Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on um, Instagram as well. And my website is www.ldjrmusic.com. I'm still adding some things to the website, but pretty soon you'll be able to, uh, once we get the COVID thing up, we'll be putting our appearances and, and, and prayerfully tours, man. When this thing opens back up, maybe in 2021, you can come see us live. Uh, so those are the uh, social media locations they can find me at right now. Very good. And what about you, Jonathan, really quickly? So I am on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat, all at Author John. That's A-U-T-H-O-R-J-O-N. We appreciate you all, gentlemen, being on the show. And one thing that's very interesting is that um, uh, Lamont, uh, J Lamont Dozer Sr. will be on the Sherrard Show on tomorrow. His son was on today, uh, Lamont yeah, Jr. And um, now the father will be on God willing tomorrow. We're excited to hear from his wisdom as well. <laughs> and also, um, we really appreciate um, you all um, uh, being fans of the Sherrard Show. Please like us on Facebook as well as Instagram. And then also uh, like, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you can't watch it on regular television on Comcast NBC. But I don't know about you, but I enjoyed this episode so much. These two positive, positive individuals given words of wisdom. You see the glory, but now you've heard this story. I'm Sherrard. We will see you tomorrow. Take care now. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, Sherrard. This was great.